All right, guys, super excited about this video. Thanks for watching today. I'm sorry I haven't been able to post too many real-world takeoff and landing videos recently. Obviously, haven't been flying a lot because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I do hope that I'm going to be doing some more travel soon, and so I'll start you know, producing more of those type videos uh, when I'm back in the air. But until then, we've got the model airport, so I hope you all enjoy this model airport content. I've got 56 models to run through today. Uh, I've got about 60 models in my collection. A few aren't featured here. Um, they're scattered around here and there. A few of them are broken. But for the most part, this is going to be a comprehensive review of every model aircraft in my collection. So without further ado, let's get started. First up here is an ANA on the pond, 777-300. Um, I got this one maybe five or six years ago. Not one of my favorite models. I think it's by Phoenix. I really don't like how they have that kind of metallic landing gear on the Phoenix models. Not my favorite. But we also got this Air Tahiti 787-900 from NG Models, and that's one of my favorite models in the collection. Um, I've actually seen this plane taking off and landing while I was spotting at LAX, so super cool. Uh, I really enjoy it. I think NG Models is one of the best 789 um, molds in the entire market, so really excited about that one. Back here is an Iberia A340-300. I think it's also from Phoenix. Uh, I really like this model. Spent a lot of time in Spain, and so it's a pretty cool model. Then another NG Models 787-900 mold from Qantas to Time Capsule, 100-year livery. Super cool plane. Um, I actually lost a wheel on this one not too long ago, uh, which is kind of surprising. I haven't lost a wheel on any um, NG Models except this one. So disappointed about that. I couldn't find the wheel. I think it fell down in my rug, and I couldn't find it. Um, but still a super cool airplane. Next up, Virgin Atlantic A340-600. Got this one a while ago. It was one of my first Gemini jets. Um, I've seen this aircraft multiple times at New York's JFK. Um, they're no longer flying the A340-600 or any A340s, um, but definitely a cool model that I like. Um, one of the ones that I enjoy more in my collection. Here's a Virgin Atlantic 747-400, which again, just like its brother over here, the A340-600 is no longer flying. Um, so disappointing about that. It's hard to see the Queen of the Sky is not in the sky anymore. Um, for commercial service, especially with Virgin, but um, really cool plane. Here's an A380 back here from Gemini Jets. Um, I think they do a pretty good A380 mold. This one's a little bit older, one of their first A380s ever produced. Um, I got this one probably seven or eight years ago, uh, maybe even longer ago than that, and uh, it's in decent shape. It's missing, actually, uh, two tires in the back and the main landing gear. Uh, I think they're a380s are a little bit overpriced, but you're paying for a lot of die cast. These things are huge. And then the first airplane that I ever got, um, obviously not in good shape. You can see one of the engines there is missing, uh, and a lot of the landing gear is actually missing on this model. This is the JAL Japan Airlines 747-400. Again, first plane I got from Gemini Jets. Really cool. Back here, Emirates 777-300ER. Um, cool plane. Enjoy it. Uh, one of the first models that I got in the collection. Here's a French Blue, which is now rebranded to French B, A350-900. I got this one earlier this year. Again, uh, Phoenix still hasn't updated their landing gear. They're still using that kind of shally metallic. Um, they're not painting it with anything, and I don't think that looks really realistic. Um, as you might be able to tell there in the back, uh, if the camera will focus, one of the antenna came bent as well. So. Not a huge fan of this model, but I picked it up for relatively uh, little. I think it was about $25 or $30, so um, fun to add to my collection. Back here is a JC Wings um, A350-900 from Finnair with the holiday livery. You can see the reindeer there in the back. Uh, really cool plane. One of the favorite planes I have in my collection. I got this one last year out in Las Vegas at the airplane store. Um, and I think JC Wings does a really, really, really good A350-900 mold. And I really like the landing gear and the attention to detail on this model, so really love that. Here in the back, we've got Boeing House Livery Colors, 777-200LR, uh, uh Probably the sixth or seventh model I ever got from Gemini Jets. Pretty nice. Um, I think my 777s tend to have a tendency of losing uh, their back landing gear. I'm missing one wheel. The landing gear is still there, but I'm missing one wheel. And then on this Delta 777 uh, LR, which is being retired soon, it's also missing the exact same wheel in the exact same spot. So kind of funny that it worked out that way. 
Um, again, I got these when I was a lot younger, so I didn't take as great care of them as I should have. I was probably taxiing them around my model airport sets, and uh, they lost wheels left and right. But they're still in relatively good shape. I think this is a really cool 777-200 here. Um, unfortunately, as I said, Delta is retiring that plane, I think, by the end of the year. I'm not sure about that, but um, feel free to correct me down in the comments below. Moving on, from Air France, this is their Sky Team livery, a 777-300 ER. Um, actually, maybe it's a 777-300W um, or whatever that is. Not sure uh, which variant it is, but it's a great model. I think this one's from JC Wings. And I actually put some pencil, some graphite there on the wing, so it looks a little bit darker, like the wing hasn't been cleaned. Um, and it kind of looks a little bit, in my opinion, more realistic. Then here's its little brother here in the back, the A340-300 from Air France. These were converted to June, and then back again. Um, they do still have a few of these aircraft in service. Um, I'm not sure they're, they're actually in service right now, but they haven't yet been retired. So, one of the few airlines left to fly the A340. Um, in the back there, 777-200ER from American Airlines in their old livery, um, in their kind of metallic shiny chrome livery. Uh, got that one a while ago. I do like it. Let's see. Has it lost its landing gear? Nope. All the landing gears somehow are still there. So thank you for not following Delta and Boeing House's pattern. Um, right here is a Thai Airways A340-600. Really cool plane. I really like this. Unfortunately, it's not in great shape. It has lost, again, a lot of landing gear. Uh, but again, a cool plane. Here's a Herpa uh, 777. 300 from Japan Airlines, um, really cool plane, it's in great shape, haven't lost any landing gear on this 777, um, I really like it. The one thing I don't like about Herpa's uh, landing gear is that it is kind of plastic and not metal as opposed to a lot of the other die-cast model manufacturers, and so they don't hold up quite as well as we'll see with some of my other models that we've yet to get to. Another Herpa uh, Continental 767-400. Really hard to find a 767-400 uh, mold out there on the market. And so I was definitely keen to snatch this one up when I saw it. Probably got it six or seven years ago. Um, really cool model. It's in great shape and it has this special box with foam packaging. So I think it's a pretty limited edition model. Not sure about that, but definitely one of the ones that I really enjoy having in my collection. Delta 767-300 here. Um, not with winglets and so you won't see this aircraft in their fleet anymore. All the uh, 767s that they currently operate have winglets. They've had the conversion. Um, so a bit of an older plane, but one that I quite enjoy and actually have out on display usually at my diorama. Aeromexico 787-800, the first 787 that I added in my collection. Um, I think Gemini Jets' wing tips or wings as a whole are a little bit too kind of uplifted. They should be a little bit flatter um, like they are down here with the NG models. You can see the wing profile. Um, it's a little bit flatter. And then on the Gemini Jets model, they're tilted a lot more. They're kind of swooped more upwards. I don't think that's very realistic. You wouldn't have wings doing that on the ground. And of course, Gemini Jets are supposed to be on the ground. They have landing gear. Um, but cool model. Funny story with this model. I was actually running um, around the house with it when I was little, and I fell and tripped. And you can see that little end of the wing there is taken off. It's because it was embedded into the wooden staircase in my house when I tripped and fell. And so I'm lucky I didn't shish kebab myself. Moving on, Air Canada A330-300. Um, just got this guy a few weeks ago. Uh, super cool model. This is from NG Models uh, in their old livery. I really like it. It's kind of this pale minty blue almost, um, if that's even a color. But great model, again, with NG Models, superior attention to detail. And uh, I'm sure you can see those regional jets there in the back. We'll hit on those um, at the end of the video. Right now, we're just going to do the wide bodies, finish up the wide bodies, and then move over to the um, 7.5s and 7.3s. So right here is a 7.67 from American Airlines, again, in their old livery. Um, an outdated aircraft, just like the Delta 7.67 that I just showed you. Um, certainly a little bit older, but cool model. Um, I don't have this one on display. It is, as you can see, missing a front landing gear there, which is too bad. 
And here's the Beluga, which is a modified A330. I think they actually call it the A330 700 something. Um, really cool plane. It doesn't have, even though it looks like it might have, an opening top. It does not have an opening top, which is too bad. I think they are currently releasing a new edition, an updated edition of this model that does have an opening um, cargo top. Delta A330 300 back here. Um, one of the staples of the Delta long haul fleet. Really cool model. Had this one for a while, but it's held up well. Um, you'll certainly find that regularly on display at my model airport. Moving on to the row of JetBlue planes. Yes, I do have three 10 year anniversary JetBlue planes. Um, here's an A320 200 um, in that 10 year anniversary. One of JetBlue's um, great liveries. I think they've repainted this livery. I don't think this plane is flying anymore. Um, but really neat, cool A320, and I've got three of them. So two of them are in good shape, and then one came actually without the engine. It wasn't even in the box, um, and so that guy just has one engine. It's pretty funky looking, um, but maybe I can use it for like a crash scene something. Here's the first jet blue plane I ever got, also an A320. Um, not in great shape. It is missing an entire landing gear strut in its main right gear. Um, so that's why it's kind of tilted over to the side and on its tail there. And then here's the exact same aircraft, but uh, this aircraft is 100% working and uh, in good shape. So it's got all the landing gear, all the tires, and it has two engines, which is big. And then last but not least, this is JetBlue's first um, A321neo. Took delivery of it last summer. Um, really cool airplane. And it's the uh, David Nealman uh, dedicated aircraft. I think it's N2002J. Um, so cool to have that one in my collection. I was actually at JetBlue when they took delivery of this aircraft. Their first A321neo, and so that was a big deal for them. Moving here to the back row, um, we've got a MD-90 from Delta, a uh, really cool model, just picked this one up again earlier this year. Over here, AirTran 717-200, I've been on this exact same aircraft with the same registration a long, long time ago before AirTran um, was bought out. Some of AirTran's aircraft, their 717s, went over to Delta, I think. And uh, a lot of their 737s went over to Southwest. And then here we've got a series of three Alaska Airlines 737-400s, which they no longer have in their fleet, I don't think. Um, this first ones we're all pulling together. Really cool livery. This next one, which is missing a uh, horizontal stabilizer there in the back right of the aircraft, is the Alaska Air Cargo. And then this is the Wild Salmon one here, as you can see. That one's also missing its back right uh, horizontal stabilizer, which is funny that they both have that problem. Um, I've actually been on a 737-400 combi with Alaska Airlines. Unfortunately, they're no longer flying that aircraft. I think they've upgraded it to a 737-700 uh, variant um, doing the combi service. Moving on to some 757s, we've got the Iceland Air. Um, I think 80 years of aviation aircraft here. Really cool livery. Gemini Jets did a great job with this one. Uh, really well detailed. Picked this guy up uh, last year, I believe, and so that one is regularly on display at my airport. Unlike this, 757-200 from American. Um, again, in their old livery, so all my American aircraft are outdated. Uh, but cool plane. Used to see this one flying a lot into St. Martin. I think that's probably why I bought it. In the back there, we've got a 737-800 from Herpa again. Um, cool plane. Um, really enjoy that one. Great detail. I think that their winglets and their wings are a lot better than Gemini Jets. They're a lot thinner. And I think the winglets are just sharper. Here's a Gemini Jets 737-800 here from Delta that I just picked up not too long ago. Kind of cool looking plane. Um, I wanted to have a Delta kind of fleet or hub here at my model airport. And so I was picking up Delta planes left and right. Moving on to another 737-800. This is the Qantas Yanani Dreaming um, Aboriginal livery. Really cool. Also from Herpa. Um, got this one a long, long time ago. And uh, I think it's actually 
one of the more, if not most, uh, valuable model aircraft in my collection. Definitely a really cool paint job on that one. Here we've got the Alaska 737-900. Um, got this one a while ago. Pretty cool. Um, it's in the old Alaska livery. Uh, you're seeing that being slowly updated and um, painted onto the aircraft right now. They're kind of in the middle of their fleet conversion in terms of uh, repainting from the old livery to the new livery. Here's an old livery, uh, Continental 737-800. One of the first 737s that I got from Gemini Jets. Um, kind of a cool plane, just celebrating Continental. And then here is a 737-900, which is so bizarre to see right now without winglets. But indeed, there are some of them that actually are not um, approved to take winglets. Um, and so, there are a handful of, of 737-900s that came out of the factory first. This being one of them, this one flew for KLM. It actually has no front landing gear, which is too bad. So you won't see that one at my collection. Then moving on here to the back row. Um, for, it's our last row here. An Alaska A320-200. I did a video about this one on my channel. You can pick up Alaska Airlines 1-400 models, 1-200 models, 1-100 models um, at their Alaska Airlines online store for really cheap. So probably go out and find this model for 15 20 bucks at that store. Great model, great detail. I think Gemini Jets did a, did a nice job with that one. Here's an older Gemini Jets uh, model, A319 from Delta, um, one of the staples of their narrow body fleet. Pretty cool airplane. Um, since it's older, it won't have those antennas that the A320 here does. It's one of their newer Gemini Jets um, molds, one of their newer releases. Back here is an A319 from Herpa. Um, I talked about this earlier in the video, but I'm not a big fan of the Herpa landing gear. Um, it's all plastic, and as you can see, it the front landing gear is really bent there. It's actually kind of like a loose tooth. It's about to break off, so I was really hesitant to take this model out of the box and show it to you all, but here it is. Um, kind of a cool little model. Don't see a lot of Northwest Airlines models anymore. In the back row, here's a Condor 757-300. Uh, pretty neat airplane. Not a lot of 300s flying, not a lot were produced, um, but Condor still flies them, and so this is pretty cool. I usually have that one out in display at my model airport. Another 757, I think FedEx has about 120 of these guys. 757-200, um, they fly into my local airport and do a lot of package delivery. They alternate between the 757 and the A300. Kind of cool. And then moving on to um, the real short haul, kind of CRJ uh, lineup. Um, here is a CRJ-900 from US Airways. Um, it's missing some landing gear. I might do a little bit of a surgery and put on the landing gear from this broken South African Airways um, Dash AQ-400 and try to install that here on the US Airways CRJ-900. After the video, we'll see how that goes. Right here, one of the favorite aircraft in my collection, um, Delta CRJ-900 in great shape. It's got all of its landing gear, which is kind of a surprise. Um, considering how few aircraft in my fleet have all of their wheels and landing gear still attached. So, pretty hyped to have that one. I know a lot of collectors are really looking for this model nowadays, and I'm lucky to have gotten it early. Here's a 737-300, I want to say. Maybe it's a 500, not sure. Let me know down in the comments below um, from United in their old Tulip Blue livery. Really cool plane. Air Canada Jazz CRJ. Uh, 705, um, pretty cool airplane, just like the CRJ 900. I think it's a 705, it might be the 905, blanking on the name right now. Again, let me know down in the comments below. Um, cool livery though, and great attention to detail you see there on the wings. They've got the exit slides, which is really cool. I like that. And then another Tulip Blue CRJ 700 here from United Express. Obviously, this paint plane has been painted over in their new Continental Merger colors, um, but um, in great shape. It's got all of its landing gear again. Really like this plane. And then the Delta um, Delta Connection CRJ700 there at the end. That's going to be the last of the 56 models we've just looked at. Um, but a really cool model and um, definitely one of my favorites in my collection. And so I know it's the old livery, but I still display it at my model airport along with my other seven or eight Delta aircraft in my collection. So that's all the models today. Um, hopefully I'm going to be getting some more in the coming few weeks that I can add to the collection and I'll show you um, an updated version of my collection at some point down the road. But hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and take care.